we're going to turn this elemental form into a quote form like this. Okay, so every time I increase the quantity, there is a total. Now, there is no submit button here because I've hidden it. And I'm going to show you how to do that. You could leave it in or you could leave it out. Maybe you don't want them to submit details to you. You're going to say, look, do you want to purchase a product? Well, based on the price and the quantity, here's what it's going to come to, like an online quote facility. I'm going to show you how to do that. And this is all with an elemental form. So over here, we've got the form. And I'm going to quickly go through the fields for you. And then we have a bit of HTML. And yeah, you may want to make changes to this. I mean, you can go and click the link to video description to go and get the code. And if you feel like you want to modify it, you can either go into it or stick it into chat GPT or something else and just clarify what your field names are. But it is pretty self-explanatory. Let's just look at this form. We have name, email, price, quantity, total. The price field is a text field, okay? And there's a reason for that because I will then be showing you when I go over to preview the actual dollar sign. You could have a pound sign. You could have whatever currency you want. So on the edit, it looks like a number. But when you're actually published and you're now previewing or you're on a live site, I wanted to stick the dollar sign in. So that's why it is a text field. I've called it price and I've gone and stuck in a placeholder. This is actually just a placeholder, okay? The actual value sits in the JavaScript, okay? So if I was to go and put $20 in there, it would still use 1999 because that is what is in the back end code. But it's a good idea to go and stick something else in. And also what I do want to mention is that when you click, you can't actually change this. OK, and again, this is all in the CSS. Your mind is going to explode when I show you this. OK, so we've got our value in, but you can't modify it just like you can't even modify the total. You can change the quantity, but you can't do anything here other than copy and paste it somewhere if you want. Now, the important bit about this price field is that I have given it the ID price. This is quite important. Because we're now going to say price multiplied by quantity equals the total or the value that will appear here. So that's the price field. It is a text field. The quantity is a number field, giving it a title. And I've just put a placeholder of zero, minimum value one, and you can go up to 9,999. It's up to you if you want to stick a value in. I find it's not a bad idea to do that. Otherwise, you'll have someone ridiculously sticking in a million or something. So a number field, quantity, and again, I've got the word quantity in the ID. It helps to keep the name and the quantity ID similar so that you don't get too confused. Let's now go over to the total field. This is a text field. Why? Again, very similar to the price field. When you actually are previewing it, I want to have the dollar sign in there. So if you're not going to have symbols in there, that could have been a number field. Same with the price. But because we are going to show the currency symbol, it makes absolute sense. So we've got a label of total. There is no placeholder. I'm going to leave it blank. You could stick a zero in there if you want, and it will change whenever you change the quantity. I mean, it's not a bad idea to do that, I suppose, but I'll leave that up to you. And then in the advanced tab for that field, the ID is total. I don't think I can get any clearer with this price, quantity, total. And then you've got your IDs and, and that's kind of it, right? That's all you're doing with the form. It's what you do in the HTML bit that I've dropped below. This bit of code, it's ensuring that we are using the correct ID field. So you can see form field quantity, form field price, form field total. And what it does down here is perform the calculation where the total equals quantity times price. You can see over here what is the initial price uh, field. So it's got $19.99. So if I was going to change this to be $60, I would change it over here. You can see where it's now applying in the dollar sign. So you could change this to be euros or pounds or whatever is your currency. You could even pop in words. So maybe you're not going to have the dollar sign. You might want to have that afterwards, maybe, or before. And you might just have GBP or USD or Indian rupees, whatever you want to go for. And that's basically it in terms of the JavaScript. It's not a massive amount of code, but this is how simple and beautiful it is. Now let's go back over to the form. Go to the advanced tab and inside of custom CSS, we've got a fair bit of code. It's actually really, really simple. Form field total. So this is the total field. We're going to assign a background color, quite dark. We've got a font color of white and I've made the weight of it be bold. Now, when you're editing, you won't always see this. OK, so don't start thinking it's not working. Just make sure you publish or just go and click preview and you will see it on screen. 
Over here though, this is where I'm hiding the submit button. So let me now get rid of it. There's the submit button. And if you want to make it smaller, left the line, change the color, you would do that in the normal form styling options. The reason why I've got rid of it is because maybe this is just an online quote. However, if you wanted them to do the quote and get their total value and then submit to you, you might stick in another field for address or phone number, you know, whatever you want, basically. And then they go and hit submit and it will bring back all of those fields, It'll bring back the original price, the quantity, the total and everything else on here. So this is something that, again, a lot of people aren't aware of. This is how simple and easy it is to kind of not show that field. And here's another thing. Remember I said the price field, you could not click on it. This is what you need to do. Pointer events, none. I mean, I have aligned it to the right again, like I did with the total field, uh, which is just over there, because that's how it should look when you come to do currencies. Otherwise, it won't look so good. So, you know, currency values do look really good on the right hand side. But the form field price, pointer events, none. You take that off and I could start clicking into there and you don't want anyone to do that because then they could actually start to modify the value as well. So by doing that, the form fields, drop him a bit of JavaScript T code -y thing and then add in a bit of CSS. You now have a basic online quote form that looks like this. Notice the dark color. Like I just said, I go and change it and we get the white font and it's a nice weighty color as well. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings.